well fed. Exactly. Well, yeah. Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. You've set a standard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You run remember for next year. Um, so let's get right into it. We've got five speakers today. Um, we're going to change the rate of going to jump up um, above Andrew. Oh. Andrew, you okay? Um, I just wanted to quickly have a look at um, how we're getting academics to use e-learning and Moodle and things like that. What we're doing in law, I'll quickly have a look at, but my emphasis for my presentation is more on um, what are we doing to get academics into this. Okay? So at the law school, I think the metaphor that keeps coming up again and again is you can eat a horse water, but you can't make a drink. Right. And I was thinking when I was putting this presentation together, why is that? Why don't the academics come into this? So I think the, in law school there's obviously the pressures of research. Um, you know, when they finish teaching a teaching block, they do research. So they're not really interested in um, going away and learning how to use Moodle, that kind of thing. They're very time poor when they are teaching. So if you say to them, why don't you do forums when you're teaching, they're like, where am I going to find time for that? So, um, there's an element of fear of technology, I think, with academics here. They look at Moodle and go, it's just too much, I can't deal with it. Um, and perhaps they're happy with the current state of teaching. They, they're getting cat eye results that are pretty good. They're sitting there and, and doing face to face and going, why would I bother to, to um, integrate e learning into my course? Um, some of them are just unwilling to change. I think they're couple with one four they have with current states their own ones change. And did I mention they're time poor? <laughs> so they're very, very time poor. So my job, I think in the law school and probably in other faculty as well with you guys, is to change this metaphor from when you can lead a horse to water becoming a drink to you can lead a horse to water and he'll jump on the surfboard and go and ride the wave. <laughs> like that. So <laughs> So, again, as I was putting this presentation together, I was thinking, how can we do that? So, um, I think the academics don't understand the change that's happening around them, to some extent. And they're, they're teaching in a certain way, they're happy with what they're doing, but things around them are changing and they're not keeping up with that, I think. They don't understand that. So, I think that part of my strategy for next year will be um, changing that understanding. Um, and we are taking steps to do that. Um, they need to be willing to take risks in their teaching to go out and say, I've never done this kind of thing before, I'm going to grab it, pull it into my teaching and see what happens. Um, I think the fundamental change that needs to happen is a change in thinking actually about teaching. Because at the moment, I've said this to a few people before, but I think at the moment with e learning in maybe across UNSW, but particularly in law, um, is that it's, it's a plug-in at the moment. And they're doing their teaching, and we're trying to plug e-learning into it. But they don't have time for this. And it, I think if there's a fundamental change in the idea of teaching that you know, we need to um, get students into communities of learners here, we, need, we can use technology to do that. Um, it doesn't have to be, if not here, it's not lecture style, but it doesn't have to be um, you know, learning in isolation, and we can use technology to change that. Um, I need to get the academics here to embrace e-learning as a valid teaching methodology because they don't see it that way, I think. A lot of them don't. Some of them do, but others don't. And some of them will pick a little bit out of the um, Moodle activities, for example, forums, but they, they won't really work with it because I don't think they believe it. So in some ways I have to change this kind of thinking. And um, getting them also to experiment with Moodle functions as a precursor to using them successfully. Okay. Um, that's self-explanatory. So that's a big challenge, I think, and there's a lot, there's a lot to do in there because it, for me, it's about a fundamental change. When I stood here last year, I've been in this job for three months, I think, and I basically said to you guys, and I'll show you the video if you want. I said to you guys, um, you know. Uh, they're just not accepting what's going on here, and I, I'm not quite sure how to um, change all this, but I think I've got a better idea now, and the idea is that it has to be a fundamental change in thinking rather than trying to plug it in. 
And so how, how are we going to do that? The strategy for 2014, what we did this year, um, I set up a, a Moodle site called Moodle Central, which um, we wanted all the academics to come into to discuss and use Moodle as a platform to discuss their teaching and also to um, give them information about Moodle. It, it was a little bit successful, but not grandly successful. We, we only launched it about two months ago, but um, we even offered an iPad for Christmas to the person who was in there the most and giving the most information, and that's going to go out in a couple of weeks to the person who was in there the most. We chucked in a forum for if you have any educational questions about using e-learning in your teaching, post them up here, and John and I are now working on making small screen capture videos to address those questions. So that, I think that's a, a core one for 2014 because it did draw a lot of the academics in. Many of them have come in there and only looked, looked at it once, but there are a group of about 12 or 15 who have come in there and they're using it to talk to each other, so that's quite, that's quite good. We had the Champions model, um, and I, I don't think it was successful, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, we use communications, newsletters, emails, and it, it all boiled down to, in the end, one-on-one -on -one consultations were the most successful because when you're sitting with them with the screen up, you can say, this is how it works, this is what's happening, blah, blah, blah. If we have, I guess one's training, we had training, uh, I organized probably about uh, 10 training sessions last year, and three or four, a handful of academics turned up, so it was effectively leading a horse to water. You know, it doesn't matter how much you say, it's going to be fantastic, we've got cakes and, you know, <laughs> a handful turn up, so, what do you do? Um, So it ended up the most successful <coughs> was definitely one-on-one -on -one when they had to come to you because their students were complaining or they or they wanted to do something and they'd say, um, can you help me with this? We'd sit down and chuck out a lot of other ideas around that. Um, we did an assessment, we, we had a focus on um, assessment this year. Um, using Turnitin. So in 2013, um, we made it compulsory for all academics to use Turnitin, or all students to use Turnitin. So, um, which was fantastic. So they all had to learn about Turnitin. So we had an assessment where we gave, um, it ended up not being one, one academic, but we trialed um, using tablets because one of the um, uh, complaints from the academics about the marking online was that it was too hard on their eyes and they also wanted to sit down in their local park or their local cafe and, and mark their essays in the cafe. So we had a trial this year with tablets, um, different kinds of tablets. The iPad won through absolutely because it, it's got the um, plug in. Plug in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it actually really, really works. So one of the academics who used it, he was on a plane going somewhere, he marked all those things on the plane and then synchronized everything when he landed, which was fantastic. So I think iPads for online marking are very good to push out. We did student forums and surveys. I wanted this year to get a student voice in here so that the academics would see that things are changing. We had a student forum, panel of six students. Um, they came in and I uh, moderated it and we just asked them questions about where they're coming from as far as technology goes, what's happening here, what, are, what were their attitudes about technology use and we got some surprising results. We also, we also started surveys in semester one this year so we've had two now and, and hopefully over time we're going to see a change in attitudes and stuff. And I just, I wanted to put, I know this is a horrible slide, but I just wanted to quickly have a look at the survey because it's actually quite interesting in law where the student, what the students are thinking about as far as technology. So look at that, mostly using laptops, only 33 using desktops now in, in our cohort. What that means to me is um, it's mobile, it's going mobile. 45% uh, are using their mobile phones, so maybe they're watching videos on the bus, maybe they're um, reading stuff on the bus on their iPads at home. Um, so do we need to start tailoring content to mobile? Um, Moodle features, 92% submitting assessments online was very valuable. Um, they, they don't want to come up, they don't want to get on the bus, come in, hand in an assignment in a little slot and then get it back with red marks so they can't really read and things like that. I think a lot of them now are tending towards getting feedback online. Um, 
only 50% thought forums were valuable, but 20% said they hadn't used them. <laughs> so <laughs> the statistics were a little skewed, I think. And around 50% found doing online activities valuable. So quizzes and kind of thing. Um, and just to extent, the use of Moodle and all courses helped you. 65% said Moodle hasn't helped them effectively communicate with their teacher. And 67 said it hasn't helped them collaborate with this with fellow students. Mm -hmm. So, and that's something that I need to improve. So hopefully in the stats from these surveys, I, I'll hopefully be able to see it improving in that over time. Because we want, this is the core for me of Moodle, is getting people in, in communities and learning so, um, collaborating with each other online. So that was nearly 70% said so they're not collaborating with their peers at all. Uh, what else? Before they kind of come in here, 65% have used the LMS before, 60% have used online collaboration tools for the discussion forums and online quizzes. Uh, so, you know, quite a few of them are coming in with technology use. Really. So, strategy 2015, again, it's a fundamental change. So, I'm looking at structural change. You know, and I think I have to get management buy in with this. It's got to come from the top. Say, as, as we did with Turnitin, to say you have to now submit your assignments with Turnitin. We may go the direct world and try to push the direction of um, you must mark online. Or not must mark online, but um, you, there is an opt out, but we're strongly. How can you say it? We're strongly <laughs> suggesting <laughs> <laughs> iPads for everyone. <laughs> So we're going to have to find a way, I think, for more top-down um, change or pressure. Champion Spotlight, as I said before, the Champions model I think didn't work too well for us because there wasn't enough spotlight on it and there wasn't communicated enough, so we'll be looking more about that. Um, developing Middle Centre with John making videos, we'll, we'll probably work over the next few months to get those really funky and really good, so the, the um, purpose of those was to have kind of, um, as we need information, easily plucked. So if you need um, me to set up a forum, or I need to know what's the point of the forum, if there's that information, you click on it and someone will tell you straight away. Um, we're going to focus on certain activities, forums are the obvious one, maybe quizzes this year, I've decided. And we're going to develop use of other forms of technology, video, audio, SCORM packages, start to get them involved in that for um, you know, learning learning sequences, that kind of thing. We just bought a very nice camera. We just bought a very nice computer, which will be able to render all that information. And more student input, getting the students with a bigger voice in here. So that's our strategy. Um, we're also, uh, I'm managing a project at the moment. It's a one-year project to create legal research and writing modules. So I'm looking at, um, creating very personalized learning systems where, where there are, um, the, the student comes in with a diagnostic assessment um, and they go into different pathways or they, there's an informal form of assessment area where there are 12 or 15 modules at the top and they can go into these different modules. The formative assessment points to the summative assessment and it's all based around the resources. I don't know that made this total teaching sense, but um, we want to automate a lot of this and put it in, in use technology to deliver a lot of this because, um, um, again, the academics are time poor and we're, we're going to try and free up a lot of their time to, to concentrate on other things and allow the students to actually go in and pick what they need for their particular course. In this course, in particular, we have really a range of students in the cohort. We've got academics coming, or sorry, um, students coming from Europe who are, have work with possibly with law before or been in the university system for a long time, they know about referencing, they know everything about this. Why would you sit and have them listen to someone or do exercise about referencing and they know all about it? So we can just bump them straight into other areas very quickly as they need it and then um, all based around resources. The resources are going to go up on a website, we're going to have an external website for that rather than use internal things so that um, it's open to the world. The modules will be open to the world. Anyone can use them from other law faculties. So it's a kind of new, it's probably for you guys, not so new, but for here it's kind of new. Um, and that's <coughs> me in a nutshell. So just a quick question about the survey, Thomas. <coughs> Did you um, organize the survey?
pressure they to support the changes you can bring about, or is it something with the dean or the board? No, I organised it um, to uh, and what, what yeah, think? Exactly, to take it to the academics and say, look, this is what's happening. So have you got support from your Yes, um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thompson, a question and then a comment. Um, yeah. the, the question is, does the faculty itself have you know, an e-learning strategy or does it have something that's formulated that then ha you know, has the status of, okay, this is what we're on about, you know, our academic performance reviews at the end of the year, we're right. going to be judged on, you know, what our use is, what our learning capabilities, you know, what our teaching and learning capabilities are, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's my question, but my comment is partially, I suppose, linked to that. In, I think there were two, a um, couple of things that struck me about what you were saying. One is you kept on saying you felt it was your responsibility to do some of this, and while I accept that to some extent, I don't to a large extent because it's the responsibility. I mean, people have to take personal responsibility right. for adapting and changing, and I think don't take too much on yourself. You yes. can't save yourself for that. Yes, 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 yes. But thinking about it from a marketing perspective in terms of you've identified something that is critical, which is time poor. To me, what I will also say is, okay, then sell the benefits. Anyone who's been told to do something always has an internal voice that says, what's in it for me? Yeah. And if you can link on what's in it for you by using X, Y, and Z, or by doing this, this is going to free up your time for research or for development or for something else. Yeah. For example, your example about the online, you know, mm -hmm. someone sitting on the plane doing their marking. If you can find a few more case studies like that and then use them to sell the benefits of what you're trying to introduce, I think it would be really useful. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I think that's a little bit the management thing as well. We, we've got one academic here who is doing an intensive course and they, I think you know, they're doing four days or something and he paired off one of the days to do e-learning and they got paid the same. Mm -hmm. and so that kind of thing has to come from above to say, okay, you could do exactly. that. Um, and use the time to create these kinds of learning things. Your question, um, the faculty does have an idea, but um, I'm the person who's executing that idea, and it's, it's a very loose idea, I think. There, there's, there's a lot of support here for it, um, but, and you know, a lot of the academics are coming into the program and you know, looking at it, dipping their toes in the water, but it could go a lot faster. You mentioned champions, but did that did that actually help? Or not? I mean, it's really good. that's one thing we're looking at. Right. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of academics who are doing really good work mm -hmm. um, using Moodle. Um, I think we, as a team, we didn't really um, expose that to everyone enough. I think so. I'm going to have to work out strategy this year of how do we. And get that out. We had a couple of seminars where um, we had one article which was quite successful, successful like about seven academics turned up mm. out of 50 or whatever. Yeah. But that was um, sitting down in the computer room and so you talked to us, what are you doing in Moodle? Mm. And I was hoping a lot of the other academics would come along with it. And then we had another one at the end of this year and um, only three turned up. So it was. Mm. So you preached the converted and, um, right. and it remains that sort of tight knit group that. Uh, challenging and you know changing and doing all the stuff that everybody else is doing. That's, that's where I think we find it really tough. Is the, there's the grey area where people are interested but somehow don't pop on. But you can do things like you mentioned. I think, and, um, but it's the the rest of them. It's the yeah. You know, it's, it's how do you yeah. How, yeah, how do you them? How do you get them in? And sometimes it's a bit like I wonder if we'd be better off if we were you know in advertising. You know, that idea that you sort of Pitch it. Yeah, pitch it. Yeah. Pull them in. Um, just reel them in on the fishing line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, for, for me, right. after a year of really contemplating, uh, I think um, um, that fishing process of reeling them in, you can either have a you know, 4,000 mile fishing line that's going to take you four <coughs> years to do, or you can you know, have a short one. And that short one is management buy-in. It's, it's got to be a fundamental change in ideas. Mm -hmm. I think.
and that, that e-learning is here, it's upon us. Yeah. We have to start engaging with it. Um, the students are expecting it. It is a, it's a valid teaching methodology. It's, it's a fantastic mm -hmm. uh, methodology and we have to. Yeah. I'd like to add, add to that conversation. <coughs> Um, I think what I presented last year, we were at, uh, I said we were at Tipping Point and we've gone over. Now, I think it all comes down to understanding human behaviour and motivation and the context in which you're working. But essentially, academics sort of work to, to similar stresses and they also work to similar um, rewards. And from our perspective, we'll be very long fishing line right. for a very long time encouraging, um, you know, change champions on a low level, all of that sort of stuff. But the, if, if I was to take a realistic view of it, the systems and technologies didn't support the level of engagement that we were asking. Because when you look at a cost benefit analysis, you had to overcome barriers, malfunction, Know, lack of knowledge, all of those sorts of things. So it's about knowing when your systems are mature enough, when your um, <coughs> management is prepared to resource and recognise, and when your change champions are ready to expose themselves and to share. And I wouldn't be going for one approach. I, I really think that what brought us to tipping point was an amalgam. It was getting to the point where just can't drag this out any longer. I'm going to throw everything at it. So, like, really pressuring management for resources, re aggressively engaging change champions, seeing their praises, presenting it at every you know opportunity you had, getting external validation, and that that's one thing that I think we as a group could do for each other. And that is, as a group of people involved in um, learning and teaching. We could be choosing an initiative, not, not in the formal ways, but saying we want to give at this sort of forum some awards every year for people that we think slogged away and did you know, great things or did something at a really high level or gave the engagement. So it's some, some recognition and reward. And I found that it wasn't That's any one idea. of them. That is a fantastic idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. External validation within faculty. Within from faculty, within the <coughs> university itself, yeah. getting them up in the newsletters, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Because within the faculty, people can hide. Yeah. Once they start, start to see that their work is visible mm -hmm. and rewarded, then your internals, your management gets engaged. Ooh, it's affecting our reputation, all of that sort yeah. of stuff. That was the way I experienced it. And I'm talking, we did a decade of slow burn. Right. Put one year of chucking everything at it, at every, and it's went up the tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, sorry, sorry, that's half an hour. <laughs> 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 <laughs>